Hello and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. I'm your host, Conley Zani. This show is under the auspices of Rich Rayner, our Portsmouth Town Administrator. Together, Rich, myself, and the entire Portsmouth This Week team are on a mission to build community. We do that by bringing you accurate and timely information about the issues and events that impact you. We introduce you to the faces, the personalities, the leaders in this magical place in which we live. I'm so excited today to have as my guest, Jim Knott, the chair of the Zoning Board of Review. How are you, Jim? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Well, thank you. I, I hear that this is the first ask that we've had of the Zoning Board to come on the show. It is. And, and I've been challenged. People are like, Zoning Board? I was like, it's going to be an exciting show. I loved talking to you yesterday about what we wanted to cover. And I cannot believe the stories that you have. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. So let's just start with you sharing a little bit about yourself and how you even got into this. Well, uh, as we spoke yesterday, I was you know, raised here in Portsmouth. I yeah. first part of my life was up on Freeborn Street. And, okay. you know, my dad was military. He retired here. And uh, eventually we, my parents bought a house down on Immokalee Drive. So, you know, pretty much in the center of town. And, you know, my father was very involved in, in you know, the town always believed in giving back. He was on various building committees. And as I got older, I said, you know, I watched the town begin to change from a farming community because we grew up working on farms. Yeah. Um, and it was morphing into something different. Yeah. Describe what it used to look like to you in your mind's eye. Well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, no matter where I lived, whether it was on a Mokalee Drive or Freeborn Street, there was a farm right there. Yeah. And, and as, a, as even a very small child, I remember going to... Peixo's farm on Freeborn Street to help him feed the chickens. And, you know, as you got older, you got a job up on, uh, you know, Chase's farm up of East Main Road um, where you'd go work in the fields before yeah. you could actually go out and get a job. And yeah, make and you money. were running through fields to visit friends. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we played in the fields. That's yeah. what we did. Yeah. But and there was a kind of a bit of a town center from your perspective? There was a town center at the time. Um, some people to this day are surprised to hear that um, where Bank Newport is now was a Howard Johnson's, the okay. original white Howard Johnson's with the spire on the top. So I didn't know that. I yeah. only got here in 09. Oh, so, yeah. There, yeah, was, a, there yeah. was an original Howard Johnson's there. And then right in that area right there um, was a Sunoco gas station, which is where the um, chair cushion place is. But along that whole little strip that's right there, there was Gleason's uh, package store, there was a dry cleaners. Yeah. There was a place called Sherman Spa. Sherman Spa was your little soda shop. Yeah, a little sundry soda shop. You get the newspaper, and there was a soda fountain there. And that's and, where people were hanging out. Right. There was no Cumberland Farms or convenience stores. You went to Sherman Spa, and then just down from that was Burke's Bakery. Yeah. Uh, the town had a bakery. So and, cool. Uh, it, it was, and just well, beyond that, towards the end, was. Uh, to give you an idea of how it was, it was Peckham's Feed Store and Washburn's Hardware Store. Yeah. That's what was there. Yeah, everything that was, you needed right there. And across the street where um, the uh, People's Credit Union is was the First National, the grocery store. Yeah. So we had a town center years ago, yeah. and that was and it. And then things change a little things bit, Things right? changed over time. You know, Route 24 was built. I can remember when that was being built because it took up some of the fields we used to play in. Um, they put the on-ramp to 24 off of uh, Turnpike Avenue, which diverted a lot of traffic from East Main Road, where, you know, Mindy's Restaurant is nowadays. But that whole area, which there was Chase's Meat Market and things like yeah. that, so you diverted it all away from a lot of the retail so this, sales. This whole change thing that you're describing yeah. here is part of why you got into this, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I started looking for ways that, although I knew I couldn't change what was happening, keep it the way it is, maybe I could have a say in how it's being developed or being yeah. developed and also keep the character of the town. Right, right. So that's how so I got into it. Change is inevitable. Absolutely. But can you have that positive impact, um, you know, on, you on can. those changes? You can. Right. 
You right. absolutely can. So it's been 25 years for no, you? No, it'll be 24 years 24. this year. 24. Okay, yeah. close. I'm calling two, that a quarter century. Right. Two, That's amazing. Two different terms. Okay. I first got on in 1997 yep. and stayed on until uh, 2010. Okay. Then I stepped and, away. And why did you step away? Um, I was chairman the last six years of, of that stretch, and uh, it began to impact my family. We had people knocking on the door at yeah. dinner time to try to talk to me about certain things right. in town, and it just became overwhelming, so yeah. I said I have to step away. Right, right, right. And, and, and that, that's not happening anymore, no, right? No, no, People have no. to go online. Right. Find the Zoning Board of Review and fill out a form now. It's not go to Jim Knott's door and um, right. be like, can I talk to you? Right. Or any other member for that matter. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. even if they run into you, you know, uh, the simple answer is, you know, save it for the meeting, write a letter, send an email to, yeah. you know, to the uh, planning department, to the Zoning Board, and we'll address it at a meeting. Right, right, right. So then, um, okay, so things you had to step away just to take right. a breath. Stepped away. But then you couldn't resist coming back. Well, <laughs> when I was on the board, there was a gentleman by the name of John Borden. John mm -hmm. has very, been very instrumental in this town. John was on the board when I got out there mm -hmm. on the first time, and he stepped away about a year or two before I stepped away. He went on to push the town for the design review board. Which is what? Which um, governs the design standards for how commercial buildings will be built in the town. Okay. And it was in hopes of keeping the rural character as best you can. So rather than put up a space metal building that could go in any industrial park, you would get something similar to what Garrett Castro just built down the road on the Borden okay, yeah, Farm. Yeah, I was going to ask for an example. Right there right, on East Main, right? Right there on East Main. All right. In days of old, it would be this big metal thing. And now you look and you see, well, it resembles an older barn or has barn yeah, characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks pretty cool. So, so, so we have John to thank for that. We do have John to thank okay, for that. Nice. So John got the design review up and running. And then we got to, uh, he went back on the zoning board. And I ran into him one day and I said, why? Why did you go back? <laughs> and he said, you're going to find out that you're going to miss it. And he was right. Yeah. He was absolutely right. And it came a point where the zoning board couldn't get members. You know, there's a, uh, the board consists of five regular members and yeah. two alternates. And, and you're I, all volunteers. Let's we're just be all, clear. We're you are all not volunteers, paid. no. It's a little thankless. It's, it's just intrinsic. Well, I hear you. you you're intrinsic. It, like it's there's thankless a... if you want it to be thankless. Yeah. If you believe you're making a positive impact, there you go. it's not thankless. There you go. Okay? That's why you've been with us for that's, 24 years. That's thank right. you, thank you, thank you. So they were short. They couldn't get people. And I threw my name back in and back. I was and here there you and are. here I am. Another... 10 years later. So, so you must have seen some crazy in, in the time that you've been. Let's talk about some fun, fun <laughs> memories. Okay. What stands out? So, so <laughs> to, to come to mind, um, I, you know, it's, it's sad in a way, but it gives people an idea of some of the things you don't expect. Yeah. And one was um, a poor gentleman on Prudence Island who had lost his wife. And they were longtime residents of Prudence Island. And all he wanted to do was bury his wife in his backyard. Oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's an unusual request. So right? at the time, um, you know, Mr. Medeiros, God rest his soul, who was the building inspector and the zoning enforcement officer, didn't know how to handle that. So he kind of said, you probably want to go before the board. And okay. we're like, okay. And he came before and he told us his, his life story and his wife's wishes. And, you know, whenever you hear a petition, you don't just hear the petitioner. You hear a butters or interested parties. People who uh, are not part of the petition but may be impacted by it. Or, um, so we ask for them. So this one woman who lived next door got up and her only concern was she didn't want to look at a gravestone. Other than that, she had she no was problem cool. with it. Just so, don't let me see it. So that was a different one. Um, <laughs> I'll save the best, my best one for last. Okay. And another one was, um, and I believe, again, it was on Prudence Island uh, not too many years ago, that they wanted to put a natural cemetery in. 
Now, what does that mean? It means you bury people naturally, um, i.e., there's no casket, there's no vault, there's, there's no nothing. There's a body nothing. in the ground. There's a body in the ground. Now, okay, then. I always thought, as did <laughs> most Fruit and people, I love as, it. <laughs> as did most people, that you had to be buried in a coffin and that put in a concrete vault and that's put into the ground. Um, but we found out that that wasn't true. That was up to the cemeteries. So, okay, so you had to do some research on this, right. clearly. A, ce a cemetery <laughs> dictates how it's going to be, and we found out that Swan Point Cemetery in, in Providence, Providence has a natural section where you can be buried strictly. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> <Okay>. So, <laughs> but <laughs> The things that you read across. <laughs> but my favorite what were you thinking moment was uh, when Louis Escobar wanted to put in his corn maze. Okay. And it was a uh, while ago, huh? That was a long time okay. ago, very long time ago. And um, Louis had talked again to, I think, Mr. Medeiros at the time. And again, it was one of these, well, you are a farm, but it's a business. And we're not sure which way to go. You may want to err on the side of caution and apply for a special use permit to run the business. Okay, so Louie comes before the zoning board and he presents what they want to do. And at the time, it was, I think, the only corn maze in the state. It was yeah. new. This was yeah. something new. Yeah, and so new. people were excited. Right. Like, the board was like, that's cool. We thought it was wonderful. You know, yeah. you're saving the farmland. The, the farmer gets to generate more money. You know, the crop is being used for, for uh, silage for the cows when it's all done. And again... The testimony is all done. We ask for a butters and interested parties. And this woman gets up, stands at the microphone, and she's completely opposed to this. Why? And, uh, and I, I asked her that question. I says, well, ma'am, why? Why are you so adamantly opposed? And she had just moved into uh, one of the newer neighborhoods abutting the property. Okay, so she's and in a butter. And her response was, well, you know, when I purchased my home, the field abutting me was full of grass and wild flowers and all of that. And it was such an idyllic setting that that's why I purchased my home. And, and now it may be part of a corn maze. And I looked at her and I said, ma'am, you moved next to a farm. What did you expect a farm to do? If you know anything about farming, <laughs> farmers let fields go you know, fallow so that right. they can regenerate themselves and then they plant later. I said, you're lucky Mr. Escobar doesn't have his cows running around down there or we could be having a different conversation right, right now. Right. Well, what did she do? I, she just had the blank stare in her face She's and like, was a little oh. disgusted and walked away. Yeah. You know, and well, so this gets to a, an important point about views. Right. Like you don't get you don't have rights to a view. One of, the big, right? one of the biggest misconceptions yeah. for a lot of people in this town, uh, probably for anywhere, is that views, and you're correct, views are not rights. There's nothing in like they should be a right, There's but nothing not. in a zoning ordinance or anything, and we see it many, many times now where um, you take some of the old neighborhoods on um, sloping hills, say, overlooking the Scott River, and they may at the time have been... Uh, you know, single-story ranch houses, and somebody comes along, buys it, and they want to renovate it. They want to put a second story on it. And, y yeah. you know, you want to put a second story, and now the house that's uphill from you, you're going to block their view of the Sconnet River. Right. And, you know, the abutters come, and they're totally opposed to this. They're going to block my view. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, views are not rights. We can't take it into consideration or yeah. anything like that. And... You know, whether it's a commercial building, whether it, 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 yeah. it's another house in addition, yeah. they're not rights. And it's a big misconception people have. Yeah, which gets me to almost anything that comes before you. There are people that are liking your decision. There are people that are not liking your decision, right? So that's tricky. It's very tricky. I feel like tricky. you have to have a, a particular kind of temperament uh, to do this job. You, you, have to, you have to be objective. You have to do your research. Uh, you have to be very open-minded, and you can't go in with any preconceived notions. 
And it, that's easy to say. And hard to do? Easy to say? Very hard to do, and yeah. you don't always do it. Yeah. But it, it's amazing how your any preconceived notion you have can be flipped in a heartbeat. Example? Uh, nothing I can think okay. of right all off right, the right. bat. Fair. But, you know, it, 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 it does happen. But that's happen. important. It does happen. Yeah. Um, and yes, there are people that are adamantly opposed. There are a handful of individuals, and I will say this, in this town who have been adamantly opposed to many things. Many <laughs> to kind things. of everything. Uh, I think and, I know and, who some of those individuals and, and, and are. It always <laughs> seems to be the same individuals. The irony to that is whenever there's been an opening on something like the zoning board, planning board, design review, you never see their names on the application list. The opportunity for you to go ahead and sit on a board and make that controversial decision because you have to abide by the ordinance, not what your heart tells you. Right. And that's hard. That is really hard. So, yeah. you know, to those people that might watch this, I challenge them. If there's ever an opening on one of these boards, take a risk, throw your name in, get yeah. up there, make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does one like you throw your name in? Is there right. an interview process or a, a, how extensive is the application process? Well, like, I imagine uh, you don't want just anybody. You, you I, I don't know. You, you don't. And, you know, you don't have to be you don't have to be an engineer or an architect or a landscape. Um, you have to have common sense. You have to have common sense and a love for your community. That's okay. what you have to have. Um, whenever there's an opening on one of like the zoning board or the planning board, um, the zoning board in particular, five members with two alternates. An alternate uh, would take the place of a regular member if there was a controversy or they didn't make a meeting. But it's also, I like to term it as an apprenticeship. Okay. Because not everybody, you know, when I first got in, yeah, I didn't know anything about zoning, right. but you learn quick. Right. And you do that time. And as people leave, you begin to sort of move up to your regular member and so on and so forth. And um, that's how it works. So that's why people will be on these boards for a while, but every once in a while something in life comes along and you step away. Yeah. In the past, it's always been um, two or three people will just throw their name in and the council, I don't, for lack of a better term, just approve someone. I would love to see a process, especially for the zoning board, uh, possibly the planning board too. Um, you know, Leah and Aaron and the planning board do an outstanding job up there. And Leah and I have, um, have spoken about this. Yeah. Uh, in the future, if there's openings, we would like to see, before the council even um, appoints anyone, gather a few names, have an interview process, let them yeah. meet with uh, you know, a member of the zoning board, planning board, and the town planner, and so, you know, maybe somebody from the council, and pick the right person. Right. Pick the right person who's got the, the welfare of the town of Portsmouth in their mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with Leah and Aaron from the planning oh, yeah. department, right? Yeah. Um, many conversations, I'm sure. I, I think they're in a process. I know we just did our comprehensive plan. Right. Right? And they're in the pro process now of making sure all the ordinances align with that plan. Is that right. fair to say? Right. They have to, the zoning ordinance um, has to jive with the comprehensive community plan. Comprehensive okay. community plan comes first, then yeah. the zoning ordinance. And there's been a number of new um, statewide zoning regulations that have been passed down. Right, so the state has things to say to Portsmouth, and right. then Portsmouth... Tweaks them. Tweaks them for Portsmouth. For Portsmouth, Okay, which Absolutely. is what we've just done, and sure. now we're trying sure. to... Similar to like when the town enacted what they called the town center, in hopes of eventually bringing a town center back, which yeah. I don't think will ever happen. So they may they may have to get rid of that town center designation because it does curb certain um, certain things from being constructed, built or put in that area. Oh, interesting. You know, so, um, 
Yeah. Well, let's talk about the comprehensive plan and some of the new rules of the state and, and what you're seeing as maybe new or something that our viewers might well, might be interested in or, or shocked by yeah. or surprised it, by. It's, it's <laughs> not the comprehensive plan. It's the zoning regulations. So two of them come to mind right off the bat. Okay. And um, one is and what's uh, short term as an ADU, an, associ an associate dwelling unit, accessory dwelling unit. Is this like a mother-in-law apartment? That's what we used to call an them. An in-law apartment. Okay. In -law All apartment. right. Well, the state passed regulations uh, in January that uh, any lot that's 20,000 square feet or larger can automatically have an accessory dwelling unit, uh, provided that it meets the normal setback requirements. Okay. Um, and I believe the initial concept was is for aging parents or maybe uh, handicapped children or ha something to that effect. Uh, what they failed to do, and hopefully they will change it, is they didn't limit it to family. So if you Once think we get about into this. commercial Airbnb kind of stuff. Well, people could, right now could put an accessory dwelling unit on and rent it out as an Airbnb. Hmm. And yeah, I think there's a lot of people would be surprised to find that out. Yeah, and that's going to create some drama. I hope there's <laughs> legislation in the works to retweet that. Okay, the interesting. The other is um, they've now changed um, setback and lot coverage requirements for substandard lots of record. So what a substandard smaller lot. Smaller lots? Smaller lots. Okay. Common fence point right here. You're common looking fence at point <laughs> and Island Park are the two yeah. that come right to mind yeah. immediately. Yeah. So uh, for simple math and simple terms, um, an R10 zone. Which is how I think we're zoned in ten, common that, fence Right. Yeah. 10,000 square foot lot. Well, many of the lots in common fence point or Island Much Park smaller. can be... 5,000, 6,000, 4,000 square feet. Right. Days of old, it was 20% lot coverage max. And let's say, for the sake of math, you had to have a 10-foot side yard set back on each one. Well, it used to be you'd have to come before the board for a variance. Now what the state has said is, no, it, it has to be a sliding scale here. In other words, you have a substandard lot of record in R10. So... It used to be it was required 10,000 square feet. You're a substandard lot. You only have 5,000 square feet. So it's 50%. Well, now you can have 50% lot coverage instead of 20%, and your side yard setbacks now only have to be 5, five feet, feet, not 10 feet. So it's a percentage of so if a, I'm 5,000 of 10,000, that's half. So my setback's half of the... Right. If, wow. If you're, that's new. That's new. That's and really new. That's really new. And that's going to shake things up. That's going to shake a lot of things up because <laughs> okay. it can be done. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So people may be surprised to find out a neighbor putting an addition on that. All of a sudden they think it's too close to their property line. But it's it okay. meets the new regulations. It's okay right now. The one thing they have done, um, which is beneficial to the board is they've now allowed um, the planning department um, or the um, um, zoning enforcement officer to administratively approve certain variances versus having to come to the full board. Perfect for instance, house not on a public way on Prudence Island. Prudence Island hasn't had a public way since Roger Williams. <laughs> okay, and they're never going to. Yeah. But anybody that wanted to do anything had to come before the board. So now they can administratively approve it. It has to be advertised, so a butter's no. Right. But it can be administratively approved. So they're removing robots. A lot of that, yeah. you know, things that people had to That's do in the nice. past. And if anybody does have an issue with it, then it just gets remanded to the board for a regular hearing. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So this is kind of constantly changing and Always. Like you, so you're constantly on a learning curve. I have I have gleaned that constantly. And let's talk. We probably only have time for one more. Topic there is to one more. The technology, the technology. Yes. Look at you and me arcing. Oh, my I'm goodness. You. So we, let's we, talk about it. So, you, you know, <laughs> in rewriting the ordinance, one of the hardest things Leah and Aaron are going to have to do is how do you predict the future when you're writing an ordinance? Yeah. When so, our ordinance was written, there was no such thing as uh, wind turbines or solar farms. Yeah. And here they are. Yeah. So tell your story. But this goes story. back to many years ago, yeah. shortly after I was on the board. Yeah. Okay. 
And a company called Qualcomm, which many people will know the term, came before the board and they wanted to erect an antenna. Years and years and years, years ago. Years and years and years ago because this new cell technology was coming out. <laughs> and this cell technology and you know, to this day, it's, it's embedded in my brain. The Qualcomm engineer is trying to explain to us that, you know, someday in the future, you, everyone could have a phone that you don't keep in your house. You take everywhere with you. And you guys are like, that's we're, science fiction. We're like, is George Orwell <laughs> writing this? There's no way that's going to happen. Right. And here we are, 2024, yeah. and not only do I have my cell phone, I've got my personal computer, I've, yeah. I've got everything. Yeah. And that was just a thought way back yeah. when. And so what was your verdict on that? Oh, we absolutely approved it. You were yeah. like, let's do it. Well, we approved it, sure. Um, but it's just so funny to watch that change. But again, it goes back to you can't predict the future. Yeah, yeah. so link it have, to the reality right now. Right. So I hear you. You can't predict. So right. how are you managing this? Or how are well, you and Leah and Aaron and, and clearly probably the building in uh, our building well, department um, too? Everybody's involved what, in this. What I've loved that Leah and Aaron have done, you know, because we have to rewrite the ordinance. Um, they did it with the uh, comprehensive plan is they've had uh, an outside consulting firm. But along with that, and particularly this coming Thursday, um, we have a joint meeting with the planning board, us, um, and uh, the company doing the helping with the zoning rewrite. And we're putting all of our collective heads together. So they're getting the boards involved to try to say, OK, how do we rewrite this ordinance? First of all, what can we take out that's superfluous and we don't need anymore? Yeah. And what can, can we turn something a little different so maybe it protects us in the future from something just coming in carte blanche because it used to be uh, the ordinances from the state used to state that if something is not listed in the ordinance it's not allowed now the state says if it's not written in your ordinance it's allowed oh, wow. oh okay. okay that's a big shift that's, that's a, a big, philosophical that's shift. a big shift <laughs> right Goodness. right right you can't okay. go by that anymore okay yeah so wow. Uh, so I think that's a wonderful way to do it is to involve the people that have to deal with it after it's written. Well, I am very impressed to hear your story, the role that I feel like you are playing, which is really th thank you. Thank you for for doing this, you and the entire team. We have just about a minute. Is there anything you want to say to our viewers about about zoning and just to leave them with some some closing thoughts i won't be around forever <laughs> okay and i don't want to become that curmudgeon that people say oh he's been on there too long and someday i'll, I'll step away as will yeah. others yes and i want to encourage the younger people in this town to step forward take on a role of something like this Help your town yeah. do something for yeah. it. Learn yeah. about your town. Learn about your yeah. town. The history you learn, even at my age, living here my whole life, there's still things I learn. I still love things it. you don't know. And it, it's amazing. There's a lot of history in this town. And yeah, to preserve it is a beautiful thing. It really is. Oh, Jim, wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yes, I really you appreciate know. it. My pleasure. My guest has been Jim Knott, our chair of the Zoning Board of Review. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time on Portsmouth This Week.